Welcome to video lecture F10. This one is on classifying quadratic forms. I'll be your CEO, that's Chief Education Officer Tom Roby, and here are the outline and objectives. We want to apply the principal axis theorem that we saw in a recent video lecture to, qual to classify quadratic forms based on their eigenvalues. So it turns out that there's something roughly the sign of a quadratic form, whether it's positive definite, negative definite, indefinite, or there are a couple of other cases that we'll talk about. It, this is determined by the sign of its eigenvalues. A set of eigen, multi-set of eigenvalues is sometimes called the spectrum. So if I use that terminology, that's what I mean by it. Uh, and that's all we'll try to do in this video lecture. Let's take a look some, at some pictures to help us understand what's going on right away. So pictured below are graphs of three quadratic forms. And I can't point at them very well because notice that that's opaque to my finger and the rest of me. So, but if you look, you'll see that the one on the left, 5x1 plus 3x, 5x1 squared plus 3x2 squared, you know, looks like a parabola. It looks like sort of a parabola if you sliced it this way and a parabola if you sliced it that way, right? Both pointing up. Whereas the 5x1 squared looks like a parabola if you slice it this way, but looks like straight lines if you slice it that way. And that should make sense from the equation, right? Because if I don't change if I change y, it doesn't actually change this quadratic form, right? So along values of constant y, I should have the same thing. Okay, so, so here's the definition. We'll call a quadratic form positive definite if it's always, so first of all, when you, a quadratic form, if you plug in 0, you always get 0, right? The question is what happens when you plug in something non-zero. So if whenever you plug in something non-zero, you always get something positive, then we'll call it positive definite. And you may recall that we actually use positive definite to describe the standard inner product, which is the case when the symmetric matrix is just the identity matrix, right? So that's just, and that, that's a useful property of one of these forms or inner products to have if you want to talk about more general forms later on, which you probably will. Okay, we'll call it positive semi-definite if if x is not 0, well, it could be 0, but it has to be at least non-negative. Okay? And the best way to clarify the difference between the two is if you look at the first picture on the left and the last one, one of those is positive definite and one of those is positive semi-definite. And can you see which one? So right, if you look at this last one here, right, there's a whole line right in that trough, there's a whole line of y values, x equals 0 and y can be anything, which give you 0. So that, that's the positive semi-definite one. Whereas the one on the far, um, that'll be on the far left of your screen, yes, the one on the far left is actually the one that uh, is positive definite. Okay, the only place where it's, it's always bigger than or equal to 0 and the only place where it's equal to 0 is when the vector that you input is 0. Okay, so similarly we have negative definite and negative semi-definite. Those are just the, the ne negative values of the, the, the flip side, if you will. And then finally, uh, one of these pictures is indefinite. In other words, depending on what values of x1 and x2 you pay, plug in, you might get positive or negative values. Right? And so probably you can take a second to, to think about which one it is, but it's pretty easy to see either from the algebra or the geometry. Right? That second one has, looks like kind of like a saddle, right? And so if you go, if you make x bigger, then you'll have something that's positive. And if you make x1 bigger, I mean, if you make x2 bigger, you'll get something that's negative, right? And that's 5x1 minus 3x2 over here is exactly what has that property, okay? So with these kinds of quadratic forms, you can get things that sort of look like parabolic cups, things that look like parabolic, you know, shields or, uh, umbrellas or something, things that look like parabolas, just, uh, you know, sliced parabolas extended along a line, and things that look like saddles. But all of those things are not so hard to understand. Um, and if, when you take multivariable calculus, maybe you've already had it, you know, the saddle points that come up are exactly, these are like the poster child for these kinds of saddle points, and they only depend on the first two derivatives, right? So there's a relationship there that I won't get into, but you can think about so this is the definition of a quadratic form. 
of, uh, of the definition of paragraphic form being positive, definite, etc. Um, and here's the theorem. If I have a symmetric matrix, then I can classify the quadratic form corresponding to it is it's positive definite if all of its eigenvalues are positive. It's positive semi-definite if all of the eigenvalues are non-negative. It's negative definite if all of the eigenvalues are negative. It's negative semi-definite of if all of the eigenvalues are less than or equal to zero. So some could be zero, but the other ones all have to be less than or equal to zero. And it's indefinite if it has both positive and negative eigenvalues. And the point is that this classification is not hard to deal with in practice. All you have to do is use the principal axis theorem, right? Which says that we can find an orthogonal change of variables. Instead of thinking with x glasses, we think with y glasses. And with respect to that change of variables, we can always diagonalize the matrix A, which means that we get a uh, quadratic form that has the form lambda 1 y1 squared plus lambda 2 y2 squared plus dot 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 plus lambda n y n squared. And that's great, right? Because at that point, you understand everything there is about it. If all of these eigenvalues are positive, then it's definitely positive definite. And if some are positive and some are negative, then you know by making uh, the values, I, I guess based on a simple way to see it is, uh, suppose that lambda 1 is positive, right? Then I can definitely get positive values by plugging in y1 equals 1 and all the other yi's equal to 0. Now if one of the other guys is, is, is negative, say lambda n is negative, then I can plug in 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and then I'll get a negative value, right? Because, um, so then I have both positive and negative values. Okay, so exactly that same kind of analysis lets you handle all of these cases with equal ease. Uh, so there's not really all that much to say. Um, and so suppose I ask you to do like one specific classification. So here's a concrete quadratic form. We want to classify it. What are we going to do? Um, and I guess I'm going to write this one all out by hand. So you say, OK, first of all, what's the matrix A that it corresponds to? So it looks like the matrix A here is going to be, well, it's a 3 by 3 matrix. And it looks like it has 1, 3, 1 on the diagonal. And then the cross terms are, well, I take half of this 2 in the x1, x2 position, so there's a 1 there, and also a 1 there. And now half of the yeah, 1, 1, 3 position has half of 6 in each thing, so that's going to be a 3 and a 3, and then half of 2. So it looks like this. So it's a very uh, nicely symmetric matrix. In fact, if you look at it, you'll see that basically you take this row and then cyclically shift it around, like move the one to the end and shift everything over, and then you move this one to the end and shift everything over, and then if you move that to the end, you'd end up there. So that's, it's a special kind of matrix, and whenever you have a matrix that has this property, or even just more generally, if the sum of the each row is the same, right? So because I've just permuted the entries in each row, the sums always have to be the same. So the sum is always five, right? But there's a really nice vector that computes the row sums. Namely, if I multiply any matrix by 1, 1, 1, then my output is the output of the row sums, right? It's just 5, 5, 5. OK, but 5, 5, 5 is just 5 times 1, 1, 1. So if my row sums are all constant, then that means that 1, 1, 1, 1 is going to be an eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue of that constant row sum. OK? So, we see, see from this analysis pretty easily that um, uh, 5 is in the spectrum of A, right? And that 5 corresponds to the eigenvector 1, 1, 1. OK? Um, so, as far as the rest of it goes, I mean, some you, it's only there are only special cases that's really going to be quick for you to guess eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So, but the usual analysis, the usual characteristic polynomial analysis, gives that the eigenvalues. This might even have been a homework or worksheet problem. The eigenvalues of A are the spectrum of A is 
5, 2, and minus 2. I see this. Let me move it over here. 5, 2, and minus 2. Okay, so the 5 was the one that was easy to guess, and then once you've guessed that, when you have the, the cubic quadratic polynomial, you can factor lambda minus 5 out of it, and then you just have a quadratic left to factor. But again, your software packages are doing these things in very different ways that work well for very large matrices and very general matrices. Okay, so what that means then is that with respect to, um, well, we can just apply the theorem, right? With respect to another basis, this is going to be 5y1 squared plus 2y2 squared minus 2y3 squared. And so in particular, we've got eigenvalues that are both positive and negative. And so this quadratic form is indefinite. And it's, I mean, when you, if you were looked at it and you tried to guess, you'd say, you know, every coefficient here is positive. So if every coefficient is positive, you would think it would be positive definite or at least positive semi-definite. But that's not true because by plugging in the right course, the right combination of positive and negative values here for x1, x2, x3, you can actually make this thing negative. And that's what this minus 2 is telling you. Okay, so that's it for video lecture F10. I better get out of here because I can hear the sirens in the background. Uh, thank you for your kind attention.